Hello! Today I will be teaching you how to use FK and IK together in one rig without a swap. So essentially, we could drag this back and forth and we get our usual IK, but we can also move the FK and separate it from that IK and get a different effect that we want while still keeping our IK at the same time. Now, of course you want to do a better job of animating it than me, but... <laughs> This is essentially what you're wanting if you're looking at this anyway. Alright, to start with you want to create an object. This is just a cube with a bunch of loop cuts and a subdivision surface modifier. Alright, so after doing that, you can go ahead and add in a circle, drag it to the side. I'll drag it on the x-axis and then go into edit mode by pressing tab. And we can scale it down a bit. And then after doing so, We'll want to add a skin modifier in the wrench looking icon. Generate skin. And it'll appear really big, so you can press Ctrl A to scale it. And then check smooth shading. Alright, so once you've done that, we're ready to get into the armature. So then you can go ahead and add an armature in. And press Alt Z to go into X ray mode. And now uh, select your armature and go into edit mode on it. And pick side. Now we can select the whole bone, R, X, 90. And now that we've done that, we want to create just a typical arm rig. So we can drag it straight ahead. And make sure this one goes a little bit down so then it knows the direction that it wants to bend. We can now duplicate this bone right here, like this. And then press Alt-P on it. And scale it up just a bit. So we want to scale this one fairly larger to about right here. And this one, we can name it IK controller. Once you've done that, what we can do is we can actually duplicate this really fast and then rotate this down, make it right about here. And this one will be our pole. So if we press F2 really fast, we can rename this pole. Alright, now that we've done that, we want to set up the FK portion of this, so we can actually select these three bones. And we don't want the larger one, we want the smaller of the two bones right here. And then just duplicate that, and then press Alt-P to clear parent, and then Control l And then now change your scaling by pressing the period key on the keyboard to individual origins. And this will let us scale each of them individually. So we can scale it down just about to halfway. So that way they have their own variation. Now we can select the inside bone and we will parent it to the larger bone. So small bone to big bone. And then on this third one, you want to do small bone to the medium bone. So just like this right here. All right, so now that we've done that, we're ready to go to pose mode. So go ahead and press control tab and then pose. We can go ahead and select the IK controller and then this bone right here. And we can add an IK constraint by going Control Shift C and inverse kinematics. Now if we select this inverse kinematics, we can go down to the bone constraints over here. And we can set the chain length to 2 for this guy. And then we gotta set up our pull target. So go ahead and click the eyedropper and then select this. And since we named this bone pull, we can actually just type in pull right here, which will then set it up. Now you notice the elbow moves a little bit, and that's because we've got to fit the pull angle to actually angle down towards that pull. So then, in my case, i got to rotate it down 90 degrees. So now that we've done that, what we want to do is we want to get this one to actually copy the rotation of our IK controller. So we can select this guy, and then this guy, and go Control shift c and we can do copy rotation. Now that we've set all that up, if we actually grab the IK controller, when we go to do this, notice that all the bones follow along the correct direction. That includes these smaller ones, and these ones are actually the FK bones. And the FK need to follow the IK, so then the FK will actually work. So how we set up these bones to have FK now, is we can actually select the IK bone right here, press Ctrl L, and hide it. What we can do here now, is we can select this first bone right here, and then select this one with Shift Select, and then Ctrl Shift C, and copy rotation. And then we can do that same thing on this next one, Ctrl Shift C, copy rotation. And then what we want to do after that, 
is we want to change it from replace to after original and then local space and local space and then what we want to do after that is press A and then uh, right select this copy to selected and then right select and copy to selected and now that they're all copied to selected what happens is when we go to rotate they should all rotate like this and same should be for this one alright so now what we need to do is add a copy location so what you can do here select the first one again and then do that same thing except for do copy location now it ends up at the beginning point so we need to change head to tail to tail and then we need to do that same thing with this next one so control shift c copy location and tail now it's a lot shorter than the actual hand right here to fix that we actually have to go into edit mode but before we go to edit mode we actually want to make use of our shapes so what we can do here is we can go into the green bone right here and if you drop down viewport display we can change the object to the circle that we made earlier and then we can copy that to selected now if you notice they're each different sizes to fix that we can uncheck scale to bone length for all of them by copying to selected and now they have a consistent size which is sometimes a lot easier than having them uh, scale to each bone now that we've done that what we can do is we can go to edit mode and we'll basically want to bring the 3d cursor to each of these points and then scale this guy to this point so press shift s and then cursor to selected and then we can press shift s selection to cursor so then this makes the small bone the same size as the ik bone so then do that with the rest of them All right, now that we've done that, we can go back to pose mode by pressing tab. And then now that we're in pose mode, they are actually the same size as our IK. So if we press Alt H to unhide the bones that we had earlier, and then Alt G, Alt R, we now need to rotate this actually. So if we go and select all these really fast, we can go into the bone and then we can rotate them on the X axis. So we can go 90 and then copy to selected. All right, so now that we've done this, what we can do is we can drag this around right here and the IK is working how it should. And now what we can do is we can grab the FK and the FK will be movable along with the IK. So the IK will still be kept with your FK. We can press A, Alt R, Alt G after that. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is make sure the bones that we want to deform are the only ones that have deforming. So we want to actually remove it from the IK bones and this IK controller. And in the green bone, there should be a deform checkbox. So we want to uncheck that and copy to selected. Now the only bones that should be deforming are actually the FK bones. And now that we've done that, we can go to object mode by pressing control tab. And when we're in object mode, you can go ahead and select your mesh. If your mesh has a subdivision surface, go ahead and apply it or uh, duplicate it and drag it to the side just in case. So then we can apply it on this guy and we can then select the mesh and then the armature and then go control P and with automatic weights. And since we set the deforming bones, the only bones that will actually be weighted are our three FK bones. Which means, now when we go into pose mode, we can actually move it around like a normal hand. And then when we drag it like this, it will actually follow our FK bones. 